I think Marley, you had a comment about in the past about um just closed captioning being available on screens in in movie theaters. You know, what what can be done just to make it more inclusive for deaf audiences? Well, look what Coda did with it. Just do it. Open caption it. It's a no-brainer. It's a wonderful thing. We could all come with our family and friends, people who are hearing, people who are deaf, watching the movie together, together, laughing together at the same time, crying together at the same time. That is a very priceless thing. And I'm sure that once they see that how well we did it, everybody will pick up on it. I think, oh, go ahead. Yes, I agree with what Marley said. Like if you bring a date and your date happens to be hearing, you can enjoy the film together and you can both watch the subtitles, the burned in subtitles and watch the same movie even. Think about it. Think about it, Daniel. That's good advice. Thank you, Troy. I, I wanna, Marley said something, we were riding the car in the car the other day and Marley said something amazing to me, I think, which is just that like, like not everyone is gonna get it right, right away, but it's about being willing to be educated. You know, and I think I look at the journey that so many people took on this movie, you know, my producers who were going like, tell me why, like, help me understand this. And that willingness to be educated, I think so many people in this town want to get it right, right away. And like, sometimes you don't know, and you just have to know what you don't know and be willing to ask. Like, we had never done this before. I didn't know how this set was going to run. I didn't know how many interpreters we needed or where they needed to be. And we made mistakes along the way. You know, it was like, oh my God, there's no interpreter in the makeup trailer. That's horrible. Like we need an interpreter in the makeup trailer. We made mistakes and we stumbled, but we were unafraid to explore and be creative and all work together and, and find a process that worked. And I think that's my hope. I hope that people kind of go, okay, what's it going to take to put a deaf writer in a writer's room? How many interpreters do you need there? Do they need to change out every few hours? You know, you shouldn't put a deaf actor on a set without an ASL master there. Because as these guys said, having deaf eyes at the monitor, who's functioning as your script supervisor, who's watching the signs, so that the actor can focus on their performance. They don't have to also be worried, oh, did I get that sign wrong? Because they'll have the person who's the equivalent of the, you know, scripty there to give them that note and they can just be free and be actors. So I think some of it is just honestly being willing to be humble and be educated and to recognize when you don't know what you're doing and to use collaborators from the community who can kind of help show you what you don't know and, and create a process that works. 